Hey everybody, today I'm talking about an often overlooked output node in your compositor. It's called the file output node. If you don't know about this very useful node already, I'm going to show you just a couple of ways to use it in your production pipeline and how it can help you to better show off your own projects. So let's have a look. So I've got here just a quick demo scene. It's basically just the pod model with a few materials that I've added uh, onto this thing uh, so that they've, they've got various properties such as uh, diffuse, I've got a glossy material, and in other cases, again, I've got a bit of a combination of both. Now, I'm in version 2.81, which has got a couple of neat features, which I'm just gonna quickly show you here. As you know, you can uh, now take a look at everything from wireframe to solid to full rendered view. There's this really cool in-between uh, called material preview. This used to be called uh, look dev, and now they've relabeled that as material. And this is sort of like in cycles, a kind of a uh, EV preview type thing where you can actually see a lot of the interactions that you might get in a render uh, in near real time right there in your viewport. So you can see here that I've actually got some things that are showing a bit of gloss and a bit of reflection. Um, even some of the lighting color uh, is showing up uh, in this model and that's really, really cool. There's one more thing that you might not have realized and that is that if you go into your rendered mode, you now have the option to take a look at a render pass right there in your view. And this is gonna become important for when we're talking about file output. So for instance, let's say that we wanted to see what an ambient occlusion pass would look like right there in the viewport. Well, you can do that. Or if you wanted to take a look at any of your light passes, say a diffuse direct or a glossy color uh, or even uh, see if there's even a transmission color. In this case, there isn't because there's no transmission materials. But this should give you a good indication of which passes you might want to render out uh, when splitting up your passes. So let's have a quick look at the passes in cycles. And what I've gone ahead and done here is under passes, you can unscroll that, under light, you've got a bunch of options, including all of the diffuse, glossy, transmission, subsurface, uh, and then a few extra uh, tick boxes here so that you can actually render out a bunch of passes in your combined render. Now, what I've gone ahead and done is done a render, and I've even done a freestyle line pass over the top of everything. Now, I'm gonna just show this up in my compositor so let's uh, join these areas up and let's have a look at the backdrop by sticking in a viewing node. And in our views, we're just gonna set that to fit. And now what we've got is a uh, simple compositing setup uh, with the backdrop showing us what we're going to see through the viewer. So I'm just going to minimize this compositor uh, over here. Um, this this sort of just comes comes in handy. Um, and now uh, let's take a look at our file output node. So I'm just going to go Shift A and add uh, output file output. This node over here is what we're going to use. And what we've got here is if if we just sort of zoom in here, we'll see that we've got the um, the base path with a little folder that says we can actually choose where the render will go at render time, okay? Now, before we set any of this up, what you have to do is in your output properties for rendering, you have to set an output destination. So I'm going to go ahead and do that by clicking on that folder. And uh, I'm just going to set this up over here. And let's call this render out, let's create a new directory, and I'm just gonna call this pod total underscore. I'm just gonna hit accept on that. In order to know what's going uh, to go to our file output, what we wanna do is take a look at all of the output um, passes available to us 
that we had set up in our light passes. You can see that you can do the completed image, alpha, depth, right down to even the noisy image if you wanted that. And if you wanted to say, take a look at any of these, all you've got to do is connect one of these passes to your viewing node to sort of see what that looks like. Now, if you wanted to have, say, this AO pass render out to a file output, you just connect the AO to your file path. And then by clicking on the folder, we navigate to where we've got that render out and we call this pod AO. I'm just gonna put an underscore there. And now what will happen is that next time you render that image, that AO will render an AO file, but it will set it in a folder. You can similarly do the same thing by let's say we duplicate this down and let's say we wanted to see what the diffuse color would look like. Well, then you can do a pass for the diffuse color and then we can just relabel this diff col and so on and so forth with say, you wanna do a glossy direct pass and let's say we even wanted one for the freestyle pass. And so you can set up as many file output files as you want and they will basically render whatever has been connected to them so that when you do a render, let's say we just go render image and uh, all that's different this time is that because we set these file outputs, one, two, three, and four. All it does is in our render out folder that we uh, specified, we now have four folders that correspond to those file output um, names. Uh, but each of these has got basically a file inside that's called image and the frame number. Um, and what, what, what's this good for? Well, if you have to have a pipeline, you have a compositor, this is where all of your sequences will get rendered out. Uh, and, uh, and so you can basically click once on render and each of these will render a separate pass that you can then pass on to a compositor. Now, uh, this works fantastically for animation. So here, what I've got is actually an animated scene that if we were to just hit play on, you can see that this moves along, okay? And we've got this uh, render that sort of will, will play through. And the other thing you can do in your compositor here, what I've done is actually set up, instead of doing separate passes, I've set the file output at various stages in the render. So what we end up getting is something like this combined pass of just the, the diffuse color and the alpha. Or for instance, this combined pass where the shadows have been applied. And then finally one where lines have been applied and then one where the, uh, the emission layer has been applied. And by rendering out each of those stages, what you can then do is in some compositing software, basically take all of those passes and do sort of like a peel away. And that looks something like this. And so then by compositing those passes together, you can actually build something that looks really good on a showreel and shows that you can, you know, sort of separate out things and use the compositor and all that sort of stuff. And this is all done by selectively choosing where to stick your file output node. And then just when you go to render overnight, all of those separate renders will go to their separate folders and then you can just bring them into whatever compositing program that you want to use. So I hope you got a lot out of that quick tip and that you'll be able to set up some renders and use the file output node with a little bit more confidence um, and you know sort of snazzy up that showreel or um, be able to work within a pipeline that includes some other people in your uh, workflow. As always if you like what you see here and you want to see more upcoming videos consider subscribing to my YouTube channel and if you're feeling at all generous you can join the ranks of Patreon supporters over at patreon.com. It's their support on Patreon that actually makes the production of these videos possible. Thanks for watching everyone. Bye for now.